right away there I want. There we go. Is that jet? Yes, I know my drugs. That's good. And a thing here with stim packs. Yes. Good. I'm gonna save because I don't trust this game. I can move ahead a little bit. Oh, there's an enemy right on the corner here. So, hi there. What are you, Grummer? Okay, so you're no problem. Like I said, this game stops being difficult later in the game. Once you do, once you get some of the more ridiculous weapons, it just becomes kind of a breeze. Everything's just nice. I'm this is on hard difficulty as well. And none of them are really that tough, to be honest. Grummer. Romer's on his. I mean, glowing ones would still take a few shots to kill. And a Reaver would definitely be a little bit of a scary sight if I didn't have Vengeance out of the ready. But, because they do about 100 damage, which means with my Winterized T51, I mean, with my Chinese stealth armor, Winterized T51 armor, I'm only reducing it by like 17 damage. So it's still like 90, that's like 83 damage, I think, per hit. With a health pool of 320. 390, you know, that takes about four to five hits to kill me, pretty much. If there's no critical hits, if they never do a critical hit. Uh, so yeah, there's this guy here, he kind of sits here with his turrets, and uh, a bunch of ghouls spawn, and you can choose to help him out, or you can just sit back and watch him fight, it's up to you. I mean, he does kind of do a really good job of handling these things. Unless there's a reaver, which I don't think there should be one. You can mostly just stand back and let him do it. I'm gonna fight just so I can get the experience for it. I shouldn't get anything at all from that. Well, that's disappointing. But yeah, he just kind of sits over the turrets and kills all of them, which is which is cool. I like. I don't mind that. I'm still hidden, so I can just take this away. Yes. And this. And this. All right. So that's all that done done with. Now we should be able to just move ahead here. Go to the capital wasteland. And if I wait, oh god damn it! If she gets stuck like last time, why would you stop? You have no reason to stomp anymore. There was no reason for her to. Oh god damn it! Okay, last time was because there was actually a reason for her to stop, but this time there isn't one. All of her science team is dead. You have nobody to take care of. Why did you stop? Damn it, Lee. Where are you? Oh boy. This happened last time, but now there's no reason for her to have stopped. Don't see why she's not moving. Lee. Where are you? Uh. What are you doing? What is it? Let's get moving, come on. God. She's supposed to teleport with you, but she didn't. I don't know if that's like the patch, the unofficial patch that fixes that, or if it's just an occasional glitch thing that happens or what, but god damn it. Oh. Thankfully they do put a quest marker on her if she's not following you so you can easily find her. If it wasn't for that, I'd be lost. I wouldn't know where to go. But we should be able to make it out now. Alright, so now she should just immediately fall. There we go. Need something, friend? Lee. Wait an hour. I am Dr. Madison Lee. I have people with me in need of shelter. You must allow us access at once. I'm sorry, ma'am. 
No unauthorized civilians allowed inside the Citadel. You'll have to leave now. Lion! I know you're in there! I know you can hear me! You open this goddamn door right now! There you go. I just had people with you, but they kind of all died. To be honest, I didn't want to kill Alex or once. One of them started shooting at me, the other one died because of Carl Autumn, and the last one died because he was dumb enough to run into a pack of ghouls because you were dumb enough to lead into it. For the smart scientist you're supposed to be, you don't exactly have the greatest AI. But you know what? I don't blame you. Madison, I'm surprised to see you here. What can I do for you? Don't talk down to me, Lions. I had nowhere else to turn. You must help us. Project Purity has been overrun. Yes, I'd heard reports of an incident there. What details can you give us? The Enclave. They've attacked Project Purity. James is dead. There may be more. I don't know. You have to do something. Then it's as we feared. Madison, I'm sorry this happened. I wish we could have done something. Then do something now. They've taken over the purifier. Lions, they cannot be permitted to have control over it. It's not right. No, no, no. Calm down. You know as well as I do that the purifier doesn't work. It's useless to them. Perhaps it's time to walk away. That's not true. James, he found what's been missing. We know how to get it running. Is that so? Does the Enclave know this? No, I don't think... I don't know. I, d I just don't know what's happening anymore. All right, Madison. It'll be okay. Now, this is James's daughter, I presume? I can see the resemblance. Yes. She knows what we need. vault tech computer, something to locate equipment. Please help her. Yeah, it's well, stuck in the well, cutscene. We'll sort this all out. Hail. Hail. I need to rest, lie down or something. This is just too much. Oh, it's Rock just somebody who happened. died. But don't forget that he's Brotherhood. I've never trusted them. Be careful what you tell them. I don't blame you. To be honest though, if all the Brotherhood to follow three Brotherhood is probably the safest bet to go with. Fallout 1 and 2 are nasty. Fallout New Vegas is really nasty. Fallout 4 is like a mix of the two, but Fallout 4 is very, very, very trigger happy. So, they're like... They're the opposite of like Fallout 1, 2 in New Vegas, where instead of like hiding out inside like bunkers and places like that, just staying away from everybody and having their bases kept locked tight and killing off mutants and things like that and anybody who pisses them off. Um, Fallout 4 is Brotherhood's like, oh hell yeah, we're just gonna charge in here and kill literally everything we think is evil. So they're very, very trigger happy. But, you know. The Brotherhood is at your service. Sure, sure you are. Sure you are. Sure you are. Uh huh. Totally. That's what the Brotherhood's about, right? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I have a major bone to pick. Brotherhood. <laughs> uh boy. Oh well. Oh boy. So let's see here. How long have I been recording? Uh, a little bit, a little bit, not not as much as I would love to. This today was supposed to be a full recording day, but it happened. So let's go talk to the Brotherhood. Let's get stuff sorted out here. There's gonna be a lot of story and questy stuff that you know, which is gonna be me sitting quiet listening to people. So let's get on with it, shall we? Need. Rothschild. May I start by saying that I am sorry for your loss. Or not? I was acquainted with your father many years ago. The world has lost one of its few remaining visionaries. Uh, thanks for the sympathy. I think nothing of it. Now, Dr. Lee nice. has explained your predicament. You need to locate some vault tech equipment. I guess. Are you quite sure? I suspect that would be a waste of time. Regardless, the Brotherhood is not in possession of such a device. There is, however, a way in which we may be able to ascertain the location of one. 
Running short on time here. Let's cut to the yes. chase. Well, I'm afraid that with the emergence of the Enclave, the Brotherhood is rather busy right now. I elected to take time from my responsibilities to assist you. Perhaps I was in error. Nonetheless, we may have what you seek. In the archives upstairs is an old pre-war Vault-Tec terminal. I will send word that you need access to it. Thanks for the help. You are welcome. If you require further assistance, I may be able to help. Uh, Rothschild has that whole high and mighty act of his as well. It's annoying. Uh, as most of the Brotherhood have that kind of like attitude towards people. They always think they're better than everybody else's. Out of line. My condolences. Your father was a good man. What do you know about the Enclave? More than anyone else, I dare say. Certainly enough to know they're the greatest threat the Capital Wasteland has ever faced. The Brotherhood of Steel has encountered the Enclave before, you see. Over 30 years ago, back in California. Then they were well, by a President Richardson. Now we've got this... Eden to contend with. It matters not now, as before they seek to control and destroy, all in the guise of restoring order. I mean, like Your you guys. Father, I fear, was just the beginning. Like, exactly like you guys, you mean. <laughs> Tell me more about the Brotherhood still. The Brotherhood is an old organization going back to the years just after the war. We are but a part of it. What would you like to know? Why are you guys always assholes? I mean, uh, if it's just the part of the Brotherhood, where's the rest of it? The Brotherhood began on the West Coast. It exists there still. We were dispatched to this location many years ago. In truth, the Brotherhood of Steel has been struggling for years, both here and back home. Honor, truth, courage. These virtues seem to have little meaning in these troubled times, I'm afraid. I'll be honest, I didn't really hear most of that. I was too busy looking at your eyebrows as they kind of freak out with your eyes. What the hell's wrong with them? What, what is that? Why, why did he... Uh, Project Beauty, you are both beautiful and really creepy. Hmm. Ah, no. That's the real question, isn't it? Our orders were, and are, to acquire any and all advanced technology. And we have, to the best of our abilities. But when I realized the extent of the super mutant threat, I felt it was my responsibility to aid the people in their struggle against them. Unfortunately, my superiors back west disagree with my assessment of the situation. They feel I've grown too attached to the local populace, and they're right. In any event, the Enclave's arrival changes everything. How long have you been here? It's been over 20 years since we arrived, and we've been struggling to contain and eradicate the super mutants for nearly as long. With the arrival of the Enclave, I have a terrible feeling the super mutants are the least of our worries. Well, to be honest, they're the second biggest threat, and if you fight Overlords, they're definitely the biggest threat. Overlords can even kill Enclave members. Also, my finger's bleeding. That's a thing. Alright. So be it. I'd like to know where I'm about the Brotherhood of Steel. Never mind. And you can tell me about the Super Mutants. Would you believe no? It's pathetic, really. Considering we've been fighting those abominations for nearly 20 years. In all that time, all we've managed to do is to contain the threat, hold them back so they don't overrun every blasted settlement out here. But we don't really know anything. Where they're from, why they've infested the DC ruins. And now here we are, holed up in our citadel, low on resources, low on troops. It's enough to make an old man so very tired. Yeah, that's the one thing though. I'll give to for the Fallout 3 Brotherhood that these guys are a little bit nicer than the other ones. They are willing to stay here and fend off the super units, and I will actually agree with the idea that they're probably the sole reason why the super units haven't taken over the you know entire wasteland yet. Oh god, I kicked my mic again. 
They're the reason why the wasteland hasn't taken. The, 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 the. Oh god, buddy, please stay awake. Okay, sorry. Um, what was I? Okay, yeah. So they're probably the reason why the stream units haven't completely overrun everything yet. Because stream units are very dangerous. The stream units are incredibly dangerous species. They can easily overwhelm humans, and the fact that we're like this superhuman doesn't isn't a good way to ch gauge everything. To be honest. You know, a normal human versus normal human the superhuman usually wins. So, um... I'll give it to them. Their power armored and heavy weaponry did help hold off the super mutants. So, we'll, we'll give them that. They are they are definitely trying to help, at least. But they're like a very rare exception. That's a thing. Supposed to deal with the robot. Ah, yes. Everyone asks about the robot. Hard not to, I admit. I guess I don't know what I'm talking His about here. His name is Liberty Prime. Very patriotic. Built by a very proud nation during a very desperate time. We've had about as much success getting him working as they did. You should speak with Scribe Rothschild. He can tell you more. Huh. So there you go. Of course, you like to know any more about how it, so what more did you want to know? And that's the reason why it's still yellow, because he has a little bit different there, and that's it. Alright, so Liberty Prime, of course, is this thing here, this giant robot. You may have not noticed it when I was walking by. You probably did, but there he is. Um, but he doesn't work. So, yeah, no. Liberty Prime operations, uh, historical records, project summary, classified eyes only, military contract 38917. Codename Liberty Prime. Project goal. No less than the creation of the most powerful combat robot the battlefield has ever seen would express goals of liberating occupied Anchorage, Alaska from its Chinese aggressors. Summary, the United States Army has succeeded in contracting both Robco and General Atomics International to work on their first joint project. The robot they create, Liberty Prime, will be the very embodiment of American military might. A walking, talking, nuke-tossing hero who will remind the world what it means to be a superpower. I am fully confident that the presence of Liberty Prime at the Anchorage front line will be to the Chinese what, la, what the Hiroshima bomb was to the Japanese in 1945. General Constantine Chase. Oof. Oof, 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 oof. Yeah, but the nuclear bombs were still an instant wipeout of people that really didn't deserve to be wiped out. At least Liberty Prime will know exactly what they need to kill to win their war, at least. You know, if there's any sort of like way to make Liberty Prime, you can't compare Liberty Prime to a nuclear bomb, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, come on. Uh, Capital Post article, June 3, 2022, by Walter Street B. Munro, Capital Post staff writer. In a startling turnaround from their previous policy of complete convert development, the United States Army has confirmed that they are indeed working on a new superweapon. One designed specifically to crush the Red Chinese Invasion Force and liberate occupied Anchorage, Alaska, once and for all. Speaking at an Army press conference at the Pentagon, General Constantine Chase stated, No more secrets. The time has come to lay all our cards on the table. So the Chinese can see with their own eyes that we've got the winning hand. The United States Army is proud to announce that for the first time in history, General Thomas International and Rob Co. have joined forces to create for this great country a super weapon that will leave energy single, every single yellow-bellied red shaking in their commie boots. It is their words, not mine. Unfortunately for our readers, that's as specific as Chase is willing to get. While the, he and the army are ready for China to know the US, it's only a new weapon, they're not quite ready to level just what it is or when it will be ready for development. All in due time, all in due time. Rest assured, when this weapon is complete, liberty will come to Anchorage and hell will follow. Or those are the Gen Chase. I'm sorry, but you're being completely you're being completely unrealistic. There's simply no way the robot will be combat ready in three months. The chassis is complete. All weapon systems are online, and the voice module has been programmed as requested. But power consumption is still our primary concern, and neither Doctors Honeywell nor Park have yet found a simple solution. We'd hope to subcontract vault and utilize the talents of Dr. Braun, but apparently he's gone into seclusion, working on one of their own projects, and they couldn't reach him at this point if they wanted to. So that's out. I'll give it to you straight, General. This is the biggest robot the world has ever seen, and we just haven't been able to find a power source small enough and powerful enough to get the damn thing running on all the systems online. In three months, we might be able to get into the robot can walk in down, down, and crash. But all the systems will be offline. Maybe you can just step on the red Chinese. The red Chinese. Dr. Stanley Bloomfield, project lead. So yeah, they had problems powering it. That's the problem. Diagnostics reports, May 8, 2077. Um... 
Here are the results of the latest robot diagnostics. Mobility, 0%. Navigation translation, 0%. Internal processor, 46%. Weapon systems, 45%. Power management, 37%. Voice module, 100%. Sky Rothschild is confident that by redistributing power from the weapons and mobility systems, we'll be able to bring power management up to at least 6-7%, enough to successfully carry out a full activation sequence. July 13, 2277. Sky Rothschild has completed a full new diagnosis of the robot. Here are those results. Mobility, 10, 0%. Navigation or sanitization, 0%. Internal processors, 12%. Weapon systems, 13%. Power management, 1%. Voice module, 100%. It has been determined that the recent feedback spike, which resulted in overall system degradation, was in fact caused by the installation of the new power capacitor, as Scribe Rothschild suspected. Though further notice, Scribe are always sees any and all experiments that involve the rerouting of power from any of the robot's subsystems. Current. Scribe Rothschild has completed a, f a new full diagnostics of the power of the robot. Here are those results. Mobility 0, navigation structure 0, internal process 37, It is the assessment of Scribe Rothschild that once the power management issues are solved, mobility and navigation translations will jump to at least 50%, well within the acceptable operating capacity. Yeah. Okay, so Lee Scribe's journal. May 9, 2277. Another day, another setback. We had tried, of course, rerouting power from weapons to the robot's other substances several times. Each attempt ended in failure, thanks to the robot's overly aggressive combat subroutines. It's almost as if there's some hidden pocket of AI that keeps pushing against us, refusing to let anyone drain power from the weapon systems. I guess this shouldn't surprise me, considering why he was constructed in the first place. Well, that's why I began work on the neural dampener in the first place. I was convinced I could trick the robot into thinking I had actually reduced the power from some other subsystems, but the damn thing proved smarter than that, certainly smarter than me. All it managed to do was fry some of its circuitry again and set us back another three months. July 14, 2277. I'm trying I'm tired of trying to reroute power like some kind of snot nose initiate. I don't care what kind of drain it puts on the scribe's ability to research and maintain the weapons and armor. I'm proceeding with the AAVF experiments. If I can successfully create an accelerated vector fusion module similar to the technology I saw Dr. Lee working with all those years ago, we'll have our first real chance of getting the robot fully operational. Maybe then the Western elders will realize our worth. August 1st, 2277. Unfortunately, the accelerated vector fusion experiment hasn't gone as planned. Both have suffered second degree burns, and at one point, we accidentally channeled so much part of the robot's head laser, it discharged and nearly killed the Elder Lions. He was not pleased. <sighs> Voice emitter test. Child, a word, please. What is it, Owen? The robot isn't going to fix itself. About that, are you still having that issue with the head laser? I think the term you used was invariably destructive. We've been over this. A slight modification to one system and all the subroutines go haywire. Don't worry, I'm on it. Rothschild, old friend, you're a brilliant technician. But this old man's patience is wearing thin. I want a full status report in three hours. All right, all right. I'll see what I can do. Welcome. Hey, well, he got cut off a bit there, but that was, um, what's this? That was Liberty Prime talking. Initiate activation sequence. Failure. Insufficient power. Yeah. So he can't actually turn on, though, sadly. So that's a thing. Um, no. What is it? The robot isn't going to. Is talking about the same thing again? About that, are you still? I'm afraid I have. Yeah, I just you know, I just 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 wanted to keep talking. Okay, so now we have to go through this. So that was a lot of a lot of stuff, but that's Liberty Prime for you. And the current biggest problem is power. They simply cannot power the robot, which makes sense as a giant ass robot. Do you really expect to have a power source capable of powering that? I don't know. Even microfusion technology, you know, which would be incredibly powerful, will still apparently have a tough time considering its weapons and everything. So you know. So now, Hail. need to go over yeah. here. Go to this computer here. Voltic terminal. Voltic administration system. Record database nine two three eight. So you know when I said that there's gonna be a lot of story and exposition and stuff like that. Yeah, I wasn't kidding. There's a lot of reading to do. 
but I love reading and well that's what I'm gonna do. So DC area vault listing, vault 76, equipment issuance, vault number 76, starting construction date February 26, 65, so those are all stuff, total number of occupants 500, 240 months, brain power 4, light life geothermal, blah 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 blah, standard equipment none. So that's just a bunch of typical stuff, I'm not gonna go through the equipment thing for everything, well I am, but I'm not gonna talk about all of it every time. Personal assignment. Vault 76 is one of our 17 controlled vaults. It will operate exactly according to the plan dictated in the marketing material produced by Vault Tech and precisely to residents' expectations. This vault will open automatically after a period of 20 years, and the residents will be pushed back to the open world for study in comparison to the other experiments. Project goals, access to I don't think any of the project goals are available, but I'll look at them anyways. Vault 87, equipment issuance, to redact this stuff. Um, if you go through here, it says non-standard equipment, if I'm correct. Stasis Chamber 4, Plasma Container Field 3, a GEC, and Food Processing Station 6. Unexpected NFL, that a corruption detected, blah, blah, blah. So basically, it just tells us right there that Vault 87 has a GEC, which is lucky. Uh, personal assignment is corrupted, so we can't see what the hell that was supposed to be about. The project goals is restricted. So let's move on. 92. Equipment issuance, is there anything strange out of this one? Uh, sound equipment apparently, itemized memo, musical instruments, and recording equipment. Hmm, so they gave him a bunch of uh, musical things. Hmm. I don't know if you can go to all these vaults. I'm assuming you should be able to, but I might not be able to. If so, I'll, if I can do it, I'll go check that one out, see what the hell's going on with that one. So what I want, equipment, corrupted, uh, personal assignments, error, and project goals, access restricted. So we don't know anything about Project one, Vault 101, but we know that it was apparently never supposed to open. 106, equipment issuance, uh, uh, there's typical things, blah, 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 researchers, subjects, and researchers. In a Think Machine 28,000. Oh, interesting. But there's 12 researchers and 95 subjects. Not the typical. In general, automatics nuclear power. Hmm. Uh, personal assignments. Overseer Dr. Albert Lyris. Additional personal. Take notes. This version has been redacted at the request of Dr. Albert Lyris of the Psychological Research Department and Chief Overseer of the Vault 106 project. All inquiries into the goals and research materials of Vault 106 are to be directed through his office. Ooh. And once again, it's been all, you know redacted so that we don't know anything about 106 so we can go check out 106 later and see what's up with that 108 equipment uh work stoppage huh uh so this wasn't ever completed no mainly supply designed to fail after 240 months even though it's supposed to last 38 years Ooh boy and 12 months so that means in 20 years it would fail but it's supposed to last up to 38 years. Secondly, parts of the steam whistle, mini geothermal. Note from Anna, we are aware that the steam whistle is only sufficient to power the project power partially. Please do not file any further reports on this issue. Defensive weaponry, triple normal issue. Note, do not stock with standard entertainment. Ah, that's an interesting one, right? Uh, if a standard research note, all standard positions will have been intentionally left unfilled and will be assigned by the Overseer according to the Vault 108 protocols, according to the pre-assigned medical test. Mr. Jones has a generic disposition for a rare terminal strain of cancer, which should ideally cause him to expire within 40 months of the project's inception. These two events should combine to allow a proper catalyst that allows this project to continue as planned. Ah. Uh, so there's... So, if we can read this carefully, we can figure out exactly what the idea was supposed to be. So, um, there's 475 people, which is a good chunk of people. It's supposed to last for 38 years, but within 20 years, it will, um, it will stop being powered. The supply, the, simple, the power supply won't be enough. And then there's going to be the secondary power supply that's going to come in, and it's a steam whistle mini geothermal, which is, isn't enough to power everything and not gonna last everything. So, which means that the people living in there will notice that their main power supply goes down, and the second power supply comes in, but the second power supply is running out quickly. And then they have three times the amount of weapons as they should normally have, you know? And there's no standard normal forms of it. There's no radios, no books, no TVs, no nothing apparently in there. So, people don't have any way of entertaining themselves or keeping themselves calm. 
signed that with the fact that it's the overseer Brody Jones and all these other people here. And Brody Jones, who is the overseer, has a rare terminal strain of cancer, which should ideally cause him to expire within 40 months. So not only is the overseer going to die, and everybody's going to start you know, freaking out about where the overseer is, who takes power, not only did you go 40 months, so that means at least over three years with no form of entertainment, really, in a place with a massive amount of you know weaponry. Overseer dies. That is suddenly a struggle of power to see who the hell will come, becomes a new overseer. Um, and after that, as people start killing each other, and so then as the power supply starts failing even later on, those same people start once again fighting over resources that you know are going to start wearing thin. And when the secondary power supply runs out, then they're all going to start fighting again. That's what, that's what vault Tech wants to do. So this is kind of showing what I meant by vault Tech in the last episode, in which vault Tech's a little bit messed up. You know, they they do uh, some really, sh they were doing some interesting experiments, to say the least. And the reasoning behind it isn't actually 100% horrible. It's just not exactly accepted in most cases. And the idea behind it was that they wanted to figure out how humans think so that they can prevent it from happening. They want to prevent the war from happening again. So they wanted to figure out how do people think? How do people react to certain scenarios? And by doing so, how um, how as we as a human race are supposed to change our ways to make sure we don't go out of war again? And so they did all these crazy experiments around all these different vaults to figure out how people think and what causes wars, what doesn't, what causes fights, what doesn't cause fights, you know, and what can we do later to fix that? There's a bit more to it than just that. There's a little bit more of a sinister side to Vault Tech in a sense, but um, I think we learned that in Fallout 1 or 2, and so I won't go into details about it because I do want to make less plays of those ones. So let's look at Vault 112, which equipment... Uh, see, the number of Vault is 85, not 475. There's only 85 people. It's supposed to last forever. That's a Think Machine. And 12, 147C robots, caretakers, variants, 85 stasis pods, list of liquid nutrients, detailed memo. Stasis pods. Personal assignments, overseer, doctor, stand Oh, that was the one we found our fodder in. Okay, Vault 112. Just to this project in Vault 112 and the highly automated systems designed to support it, the vault requires only a single administrator. The project goals, of course, are restricted, as always. So there you go. Vault Tech personal assignments, error, and then order requisition forms, corruption, error. And that is Vault Tech in a nutshell, everybody. So, oh, that is a lot to drop on you guys. But, you know what? It's data, it's information, it's story, and I don't mind sharing stories. So, to get out of here and go back to Rothschild once again, talk to him. And things should start working out. It's just a matter of finding him. Over here. You know, he's usually down here in front of this guy here, so. Hello there. Did you have any success with that old terminal? Old Day 7 has a gig, but I don't know where it is. Ah, well, that much I believe I can help with. Step over here for a moment. I'll show you where it is. I'll give you that. At least you're nice enough to try to help me out. Anyways. Ugh. God. Tired. Oh, God. Really tired. Oh, boy. I might have to stop recording soon just because of how tired I am. I'm going to do a little bit more just so there's more than just a lot of story stuff that happened in this episode. But, um. No, oh, God. I don't want to go on too long. This map shows the locations of all known vaults in the local area. Vault 87 has been highlighted for you. There. Entrance to Vault 87 will be particularly difficult for you, I'm afraid. Why was difficult about it? The area is highly irradiated. Lethal levels are all around the entrance. Gaining direct access will be quite impossible. Uh, there's gotta be another way then. You share your father's determination, it seems. And in this case, you are correct. There may well be another way. Vault 87 is located very close to the site of Lamplight Caverns. It is entirely probable that the vault may be entered from within the caves.
Uh, don't you know? No, I'm afraid not. After initial attempts to cross the radiation failed, it was decided to focus our efforts elsewhere. You, however, are free to do as you choose. More exploration may be useful, and I'll certainly be interested in anything you might find. All right, thanks for I the help. Wish we could do more, but the Brotherhood potentially faces a very pressing, very real threat in the Enclave. All of my efforts must now be devoted to assessing the threat they may pose to us. I'm sure you understand. Results you asked for. All right, so now though he did just show us all the different vaults, so that's definitely not all of them in there. And sadly, I think the musical one is missing. That makes me sad. That makes me very sad indeed. But now if you look at our world map, we should have... Oh, God. Freaking, uh, uh, okay, there we go. We should have all the vaults. So Vault 108 is there. Vault 92 is over there in Old Olney. That's not something I'm going to be interested in going to just yet. There is Vault... Um, Where is it? Vault 87 is there. Should be more, right? Vault 106 is the one we've already been through, if I'm correct. Or where are we at 116? 112, sorry. Uh, I'll be honest, I feel like the vault that I was at... Or... Oh, my father is gone. It's off the map. That's weird. Wasn't it 112? Oh, what is it? Doesn't matter. 106 is there, though. That's a different one, I think. So, yeah, those are different vaults. They're gonna be fun to uh, to investigate. So, yeah, that's gonna be interesting. So now I do have one more thing, one more major thing that I want to do.